Deadlock is the 23rd member added to the Valorant protocol, and in this video, we'll dive into her lore. We'll look into her origins, personality, goals, relationship with other agents, how she might be sparking a civil war within the protocol, and why she isn't phased by Wingman's charm. Before joining the protocol as Deadlock, the Scavenavian hunter went by Iseline, which is a very common Norwegian name that means dream, vision, or daydream, all of which Fade kind of specializes in. Fade! If you run short on nightmares, seek me out. I will gladly share mine. We first see the Norwegian lead a team of three hunters into a facility called the Vault. This mission was sent out by the Kingdom Corporation, the same corporation that Brim once worked for. They hired the organization which Deadlock was a part of during this time, Stahljäger. Their name translates to Still Hunters. Not much is known about them, but guessing from their name, we can assume that they are a no-nonsense contractor, skilled in tracking down prey and completing the mission. Nonetheless, Stahljäger were assigned to escort a Project Landfall scientist to a facility and oversee the extraction and transportation of a very special item, a bear, that has been transformed through Radiantite experiments. This is most likely the same cargo pickup in Norway that Jet overheard some Kingdom employees talking about while she acts as a cover-up chef in the surveillance truck that she and Cypher runs. Nonetheless, the mission went south fast. Despite their planning and significant preparation, the bear tore through her team. I guess that's what you get for using an Odin and missing all your shots. But maybe I'm not giving this bear enough credit. It is possible that whatever experiments done on this creature may have happened to give it heightened intelligence. Similar to how Gecko's creatures seem to understand the human language and can form their own sentences. And don't get me wrong, I know bears are nature's most fearsome predators, but I don't know too many that will use its surroundings to take down a group of humans one by one, like it's playing in an Assassin's Creed video game. After the Brady Vore killed Deadlock's team and the landfall scientists, it was all left up to Deadlock to complete the mission and avenge the fallen. Not one for backing down, she went toe to toe with this creature, Revenant style. We see in the cinematic that Deadlock was able to break the bear's ankles and trap it in a chamber. Oh! <laughs> However, before she could press the button, the radiovore did its best Jaws impression and took a bite on her arm. This caused her not only pain, but also to go slightly unconscious, as a radiantite substance started to spread across her body. A substance that looks very similar to Gecko's tattoos, that lights up whenever he uses his creatures in-game. Do you guys think there happens to be a connection here? Let me know in the comment sections down below. Luckily though, she was able to snap out of it, to press the button, and say a wicked cool line. This explosion vaporizes Radivore and her arm in the process. The one arm Iseline used the last of her strength to activate a distress beacon and then collapsed. Thanks to Jet's eavesdropping, Valorant already sent out Sova to investigate this cargo shipment. He was able to pick up Deadlock's distress beacon and bring her back to HQ. Killjoy fabricated a prosthetic replacement, but when it comes to maintenance and upgrades, that's all Deadlock. Like all the other Sentinels on the team, Deadlock does her own upkeep on her gear and kit. Brimstone, it's Deadlock. Training on the prosthetic is coming along. I'm adjusting to the uh, added weight. The recoil compensation is very nice also. Once it's dialed in, my, my aim will be even better than it was before. And thank goodness, because she was looking like me out there in my ranked games. But from this voicemail, we can tell that Deadlock is very thankful for the hospitality that the team is giving her. I, I know the restoration, the arm, the new nanowire spooling. It was an investment in me. I wish things turned out differently, but... <clears throat> well, thank you. From the exterior, we could think of Deadlock as a tough and pragmatic individual. She even likens herself to a machine when in combat. KO! Join me on the line. We do not flinch in the face of death. This no-nonsense personality was probably key to her surviving not only the rough Norwegian winters, but the countless missions she went on for Stahljäger. It's easy to infer that she has a close connection with her comrades that fell during the vault mission. As long as I live, so does every Stahljäger before me. To battle my sisters. 
She chooses to carry this weight as motivation to keep fighting for her new cause, a cause that she holds so close to even reject Sage's offer to restore her arm. Brimstone, I met with Deadlock earlier. It was the first time we spoke about her injury since those first few days, and I, hoping to help, offered again to return her arm to its previous state. After a pause, Deadlock just raised her arm and said, Take this away, and everything they gave would have been for nothing. Then she left. My thoughts are so clouded now. I always considered my healing a gift that helped people, but is it always good to undo pain? Are the scars we wear lessons that we learned from? Do they make us stronger, better? I don't know. I don't know. We can tell from her voice lines that she uses that day to make herself more resilient as well. Ayutin can kill me. What chance did they have? I told you I would not die today. I have seen death, and I am not impressed. Ever since joining the protocol, she makes it her mission to tell everyone how dangerous the experiments Kingdom is doing with Radiant and I are. Brimstone, the Radivore response project continues. Just like at the vault, the technology will sunder them from within. No extraction chamber needed. Until then, the Kingdom site is in danger. Without a proper remedy, the wound they've opened will fester. That's all. And these words have reached many in the protocol, like Viper, whose email to Brim says, the time has come to heed Deadlock's warning. It won't matter if those arrogant fools started with good intentions, if the results are catastrophic. Your KSAT contact opened the back door for diplomacy. Without revealing Valorant, you need to make him understand what's at stake. If Kingdom refuses to take the facility offline, we'll be ready to pull the plug. It's easy to infer that Deadlock is pushing Brim and others to act as a way for her to honor her fallen comrades and to make sure the same thing doesn't happen to others out there. However, her experiment during the Vault mission has soured her view towards all Radiantite creatures, leading to tensions between her and Gecko, who has four Radiantite enhanced creatures. I saw you rejected my latest proposal, but I must insist you reconsider. Does Valorant store unsecure warheads in the barracks? Do we leave mines scattered around the hallway? Hmm? No. Those things are far worse. I fabricated four crates for this specific purpose. It is safe. You must authorize their detainment. Brimstone, I've overheard some stuff and I want to clear some things up with you. My crew are not monsters. They will never be monsters, period. If anything were to happen, which it won't, that's on me. I'll take that responsibility. But until then, tell Deadlock she's gotta chill. Her cold stares are killing our vibe. Appreciate it. Brimstone, Deadlock will not harm Gecko's friends. Understood? I would hate for our new recruit to make a poor first impression. Man, it's rough to be Brimstone. It takes a lot to manage all these egos and concerns. Despite the rocky relationship with Reyna and Gecko, we can tell she and Breach are on friendlier terms. Breach, between us, we have three very strong arms, don't we? Maybe next time, ponytail. Deadlock also sees Sky in a similar light to her fellow still hunters, commending her on her combat ability and affinity with nature. And as revealed in Deadlock's voice line, she and Sky go hiking together as well. Sky, you would have made a fine stall, Yagi. Sky, don't get shot. I need my hiking buddy in tip-top shape. Regardless of those high tension, Brimstone finally agrees that something needs to be done about Kingdom's experiments, which leads us to Brim going against Kingdom, the same organization he worked for and once respected. And thus, the Valorant Protocol is responsible for the destruction of the Sunset Lab. At the end of the trailer, it seems Deadlock isn't as aggressive towards Wingman as she was when first joining the team. However, her introduction kind of proves that there are some cracks within the team. We know whenever there's a large group of people, some are going to be more friendlier with each other. Reyna kind of shows this fact when she's willing to go against the people who are on the team if that means protecting those who she cares most about, like Gekka. She's not a big fan of Killjoy either, 
We also know in an alternate timeline, she leads Radianites in a war against non-Radianites too. Some even call her queen. If there were to be a civil war, I can definitely see the likes of Ko and Brimstone siding together, while Reyna and Gecko are on the other side. Makes me think where everyone else would go. I won't go too deep into that in this video, maybe for another time though. Overall, we know Deadlock accomplished one of her goals in ending the Radio Wars experiments. She means well and has a drive to make the world a better place. Her bitterness towards Gecko's creature is subsiding little by little as well. But what do you think of Deadlock? Was her initial reaction to Wingman and Gecko's crew justified? Was Reyna overstepping her boundaries in protecting Gecko's creatures? Could the Protocol actually undergo a civil war similar to that of the Avengers? Let me know in the comment sections down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Till next time, stay safe and I'll see you guys later. Here again we face our death. And again, we will defy it.